how much will a spring that has a force constant of 40 newtons per meter be stretched by an object with a mass of 0.5 kilograms when hung motionless from the spring? So for something like letter A, uh, whenever they start talking about hung motionless and stuff like that, I like to draw just a quick free body diagram. So let's pretend that uh, this point right here at the origin right, represents then, actually I'll draw a very quick picture. So here you have a spring that's fixed to some thing, and then we're going to place a, a certain mass on that, all right? And this mass was 0.5 kilograms, right, 0.5 kilograms. And you know basically that before the block was placed on it, the spring would have, let's say, been, you know, at that relative height. So essentially, the spring changed in length by this amount, all right? So that is basically the X value, all right? Just keep that in mind. So now when I talk about this particular case here, I know that since the system is motionless, all the forces are balanced, right? There's no acceleration. So that means that the weight of the um, block, which is pointing down, right? This would be the weight of the block. That better equal now some other opposing force pointing up. And guess what that force is? That's the force that the spring is exerting, right? On the block to hold it motionless. So essentially what this tells me then if I think of the sum of the forces in the y direction equals zero and I do a little math, I can then realize that the uh, force that the spring exerts on the object is exactly equal to the weight of the block. And we have seen this many times in the past. So what this allows me now to do is to then calculate the amount that it has to be stretched. Well, how? Well, by using Hooke's law, right? Hooke's law tells us that the force a spring exerts on an object will be equal to negative of its spring constant multiplied by its displacement. And you can think about of its, you know, display, or X could be the amount of stretch or the amount of compression. You know, it, de it depends on how you want to frame it. They all mean the same thing, though. Um, and that's part of the reason why some of this is confusing, because different words kind of mean the same thing. Um, but hopefully that should uh, make sense. So basically now what I can do is substitute this weight of the block in for the force uh, that the spring is exerting, because they're equal, right? So I'm going to plug that in, so negative kx. I'm trying to find out how much the uh, spring or stretches, right? So therefore, I'm trying to find x. So divide out now negative k from both sides. So this would be then the weight of the block divided by k, right? And it's negative overall. Expand just quickly on the weight of the block there, right? You know that weight is always equal to mass times gravity. So it's the mass of the block times gravity. And now all you simply have to do is plug in your values. So the mass of the block was going to be 0.5, as they told us. Then gravity is 9.8. And then the uh, force constant here was 40 newtons per meter. So that sounds great. And just simply plug it on into the calculator now. So it's negative 0.5 times 9.8. Uh, all divided by then, uh, what do we have here? Uh, 40, right? And that's going to be a negative value relative to my picture. Point, uh, one, I guess three sig figs. So one, two, three. One, two, three. And that's in meters. All right. Um, your answer, though, can be you could probably just give the absolute value because they're asking how much does it stretch by. So you could just say, well, it stretches by this amount, one, two, three meters. All right. You don't need the negative sign. So hopefully that's cool. Let's take a look at now letter B. So let's calculate the decrease in gravitational potential energy of the 0.5 kilogram object when it descends this distance. All right. So now we're talking about uh, potential energy, right, due to gravity. So let me label this part B. And let me label this part over here, part A. So now, uh, they're talking about change in potential energy. So why don't I just start by writing that out, right? Change in potential energy. Now, change in potential energy is always minus, minus, uh, final minus initial, right? So I could write it like this now. Final minus the initial. Okay, and then I can expand, right? This would be MGH the final minus MGH the initial. I realize I have common terms of mg, so I can combine them and then just write this, that the final height minus the initial height. Realizing this, that this is basically the change in height, right? I can re, I can even condense it a little more if I wanted, and now write just delta h, right? So this would represent, this formula right here represents the change in potential energy, okay? So in other words, uh, these two things would be equal to one another. If I were to take this now and just bring it on up and set them equal, right there, saying the same thing. All right, so now what I can do, if I want to find the change in potential energy, I have to know the mass of the object 
times gravity, and then multiply it by the change in height of the object. Well, what did we find in the part in part A? Well, we found what x is, and what does x represent? X represents the displacement, right, or the stretch on the spring. In other words, it represents the change in height, right, of the spring. So again, same thing meaning different things, which that's what gets confusing, but I hope that makes sense. So the mass here is going to be 0.5 kilograms, gravity is 9.8, and the height then change was, you can write this as a negative sign if you like, given the picture, one, two, three, all right? And then all we would need to do is now calculate because the potential energy should have decreased, right? It, it got lower, so that's why the negative sign should hopefully make sense there. So times 5, times 9.8, I'm using the exact value for the displacement there. So this is about negative 0 0.600. So this is the change in potential energy. I mean, since they asked, you know, what's the decrease, right? No, what, what, calculate the decrease. Since they asked for the decrease, you can give the answer as the positive answer. Why? Because they said, what's the decrease? And you can say, well, this value right here is the decrease, 0.6. That's the decrease, right? If they just said, what's the change, then you would want to write it with the negative sign because then that tells the reader that it is decreased, all right? Um, all right. Or tells the, uh, yeah, tells the questioner. Okay. So part, uh, letter C. Part of this gravitational energy goes into the spring. Calculate the energy stored in the spring by this stretch and compare it with the gravitational potential energy. Explain where the other energy goes. So you know that when a spring stretches, it there is some now potential energy stored in that spring, right? Just from even common day, you know, applications. You compress a spring, you let it go, it's going to kick back on you, right? Or if you stretch a spring and it's going to recoil on itself, right? So the formula there that describes the potential energy in the spring is going to be equal to one half times the force constant, times the displacement or change in displacement uh, squared. X could represent the amount of stretch or compression, right? So here again, we can simply just plug in now that X value we found. So the force constant was 40, and then the X was 0 0.123, okay? And that whole thing's squared. So you can plug in the negative sign if you want, but obviously it won't really make a difference, okay? So now, um, so let's calculate that. I'm going to use the exact value again for that displacement. So 0.5 times 40 times 0.1125 squared. Oops, no, no, not 11. 0.1225 squared. And that's going to be equal to about 0 0.300. Okay, so this is the energy now that's in joules. And by the way, I should have written the unit here for potential energy, right, of gravity. That's in joules. Um... And that will now be the potential energy uh, that's stored in the spring. Now, wait a minute, right? We know that energy has to be conserved, but wait, if it started, you know, if it lost this amount of potential energy, but the potential energy then of the spring only gained 0.3, right, from the initial to the final, where did the remaining go? Where did the other 0.3 go? Well, the other 0.3 probably went to uh, lost as heat, right? If you think about the spring as it stretches, the molecules are literally rubbing against one another. You're pulling the molecules a little further apart from one another. Um, there's a little bit of elasticity in there, right? And therefore, as the molecules rub against one another, basically, and move past one another, it generates heat. And that's how it's lost. All right, guys. So thanks so much for tuning in. Please remember to help us out and subscribe. We appreciate it very much, and we'll see you soon. Take care.